Hi there, this is Webzier. In this video, let's talk about the for statement in Java. If you want to run a particular instruction or a series of instructions many, many times, then you would use the for loop, especially if you knew how many times to run it. Let me show you a simple example. If you want to print hello world four times, the bad way of doing that would be to write four different system.out.println statements. The better way of doing that is to use the for loop, which looks like this. You give it an initial value and you give it a continuation condition. And every time you increment the initial value and based on the number of times the condition is going to be true, the statement inside the for loop will be executed. Let's take a look at the hello world example with the help of a for loop. Here I say for i is zero, i less than four, i plus plus, hello world. Now the way you understand this is that start with the value zero. As long as the value is less than four, print this hello world and increase the value by one every single time. So let's understand this in detail. So I start with the value of zero. Zero is less than four. The condition will be true. So hello world or the code that you write inside the for loop will be run. After running the code, the value of i will increase by one and it will become one at this point. Now one less than four will again be checked, which is again true. So the code inside the for loop will be run once again and i plus plus will execute, making the value of i as two. Now two less than four is true as well. Once again, the hello world statement will be executed and i becomes three. 3 less than 4 is true, execute the code inside the for loop, make i equals to 4, but 4 less than 4 is going to be false and therefore the code that you write inside the for loop will not be run anymore by the compiler. In simple words, hello world will not be printed after 4 times. Let's take a look at the same example written in a slightly different way. Last time I started i with 0. This time I will start i with 1 and notice the condition here. Now it has become less than equal to 4 and it prints hello world. Let's analyze this in detail. i starts with 1 and 1 less than 4 is true. So hello world is printed. At this point i becomes 2. 2 less than 4 is true as well. Once again the body of the for loop executes and hello world is printed on the screen. i++ plus plus is executed. i becomes 3. 3 less than 4 is true. The body of the for loop is executed. i is incremented to 4. 4 less than equal to 4 is true as well and hello world is printed. At this point i increments and becomes 5. 5 less than equals to 4 will be false and the code will not run anymore inside your for loop. Now let's take a look at decrementing stuff instead of incrementing them. In that case the for loop can look something like this, where you say i equals to 4, i is greater than 0 and you will say i minus minus. So the starting value is 4, 4 is greater than 0, this condition is true. So the code inside the for loop is run printing hello world. Now i minus minus executes at this point making i as 3, 3 greater than 0 is true, print hello world, make it 2, 2 greater than 0 is true as well, print hello world bring it to 1, 1 greater than 0 is true, execute the code inside the for loop and at this point 0 is the value of i and 0 greater than 0 becomes false. Therefore, the code that you write inside the for loop will not execute anymore and this is how the for loop runs. Now the idea that you remember from these three different slides is the fact it doesn't matter what is your starting value or your ending value when it comes to the value of i. All you need to keep in mind is how many times do you want to run this statement or print hello world inside your for loop. Now let's take a look at some of the variations that a for loop has. So the first for loop here that starts at i equals to 1 and says i less than equals to 10 as the condition will run 10 times. 
The other one here that starts at i equals to 10 and goes up to 1 will also run 10 times except that we use a decrement operator in place of an increment here. We can also start a for loop at any other value such as 6, go all the way up to 66 and increase i by 6 each time. This will again run 10 times. So let's see some more ways of writing a for loop. Here we start at 30, go all the way up to 3 and decrease the loop counter variable i by 3 each time. This is going to run 10 times as well. Now you could have the variable start at 3, end at 20 and increase it by 4. It is up to you. And this is going to print the values 3, 7, 11, 15, 19 if you say system.out.println i inside the body of the for loop. Now again you can start at 100, go to 10, decrease by 11 each time and this is the value that is going to be printed on each iteration that you see here. So as part of the Googleable section in this video, be sure to search for these things on Google and read posts from Stack Overflow and other relevant websites. Now remember that when it comes to a for loop, there must be the condition that gets satisfied at some point, otherwise your for loop will keep running and your program will crash. It is called an infinite loop and you can read more about it by searching Java infinite for loop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video where we play with the for loop in IntelliJ IDEA. In the meantime, have a nice day.